Thank you. All right. I have someone, right? Great. So my name is Vega. Uh, I'm a developer at the Norwegian IT consultancy co uh, company called Itera. Uh, and I call myself a full stack developer, but yeah, I mainly do a lot of front end, some Java back end, and on the free time I just try everything. So yeah. Uh, this presentation will be centering about around the concept of offline first applications. Um, but I'll be using Couchbase Mobile as the, uh, the way that I propose to do this. It's not the only way, of course, but uh, I will be uh, focusing on that for the majority of this presentation. Uh, I will also uh, be drawing in some other concepts because offline first is not offline only. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, talking a bit about Elasticsearch as well and the search capabilities it provides and how you can use uh, such uh, search capabilities uh, while you're connected to the internet and uh, how to uh, combine this with the offline first approach. I'll also be talking a bit about PouchDB uh, which is kind of off topic. I've given this presentation in different uh, forms before, uh, but uh, in the last year, uh, PouchDB has kind of started rolling. It's uh, a JavaScript uh, database that runs in the browser, so it's a nice way to complement uh, the Couchbase mobile uh, platform, and it works great together. Um, yeah. A little disclaimer, I do, I do not work for any of these companies that produce these technologies. Uh, I'm wearing the Elasticsearch uh, t-shirt, but that was given away to everyone on a conference before. Uh, I'm not a database expert. Uh, it was one of my worst uh, subjects in uh, college, but uh, I love to create applications and uh, try new technologies, and I've used Couchbase Server uh, in uh, projects at work. Uh, so when I figured out I could use Couchbase on mobile, I figured that was a great way to go, and I found out that it was really easy. It was quick to get set up, and the kind of idea that this uh, presentation uh, rose from uh, was based on a project I did at home uh, during one weekend, which I built an app and learned these technologies at the same time. So. So offline first, uh, which is the subject, I should explain a bit about what it is. Uh, I think we have all experienced being on a road trip or uh, living in a basement, uh, traveling abroad, basically being places where you can't be dependent on having a good internet connection at all times. Sometimes you won't have a connection to the internet, sometimes it's expensive, uh, sometimes it's really poor, you're dropping out or it's slow. Uh, so over the few, last few years, uh, many, uh, many companies have started thinking that we need to build applications so they work without a network connection, and then we build more features on top of it uh, if you are connected. And that's mainly the center point of this. Um, so you can think of it as kind of like the same uh, as, a con as a different kind of way of looking at mobile first. Uh, mobile first, you design for a mobile and then you expand it for, the, for uh, desktop, for example, or bigger screens. Uh, and that's the same way we're thinking about offline first. You build it offline and then you expand. Uh, but offline first is about more than not being connected. It's about making sure your app is uh, efficient, that you don't need to use uh, network data all the time. In Norway, network data is pretty cheap now. Uh, many uh, cell phone uh, subscriptions come with included data. You buy a large quantity, for example. But in many countries, um, it's expensive. If you go to uh, some countries, it's basically you pay a week's paycheck just to download uh, a normal web page. So we need to make sure that we don't use as much data as we used to. Uh, and we can also 
by building these uh, offline first applications, we can separate the network uh, communication from, uh, from the functionality in the app. That each time you do something, you don't have to go directly to the web. You don't have to go to the network connection for each thing you do, because that introduces lag. You have to wait until you send some data to the server and then it comes back, and then you can uh, do some change on, in the user interface. If you just work locally, uh, they remove all of that delay, and that makes your app run a lot, a lot smoother and look a lot nicer. So, yeah. so Couchbase. Uh, since Couchbase Mobile is a central part of this uh, presentation. Uh, I will take a few minutes to just talk about what Couchbase is. Uh, and I'll just sort of raise your hand if you've ever tried Couchbase. Uh, doesn't matter which product, but anyone's touched it? So a few, perhaps 10 people there. All right, that's good. You learn a lot then. Uh, so Couchbase is a NoSQL database. Uh, I'm talking about Couchbase server then, but uh, it's so it's, uh, it was, it was uh, released in 2010, so it's been on the market for quite a few years, at least in our business. And it's really performant. It's uh, quick to uh, write and read to. It's uh, scalable, works great for uh, platforms that you are thinking about or that will uh, grow, your user group will grow. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's NoSQL. Um, I can ask about that too. How, ma how many know about NoSQL? All right, that's better. Great. Uh, so I don't need to explain it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, of course, the benefit with using a NoSQL database is that you can work with JSON. And since a lot of what we do is, uh, well, we're, hopefully we're using REST uh, and uh, sending JSON back and forth when we talk to the server, and being able to store JSON in the database uh, enables us to not have to focus that much on mapping data every time you send it to a new application. So you don't have to have a model in the server, then you change it for something that you send uh, over the internet, and then you receive it, and you have to uh, make a new mapping for something that you store locally. Working with JSON means that we can do that a lot simpler. Uh, all right, and of course, uh, I've been talking about this for a while, and a lot of people ask, how much does it cost? Uh, Couchbase is uh, open source, so it's completely free. Uh, it's uh, licensed under the Apache license, so uh, that's great. And yeah, uh, one question I often receive when talking about uh, Couchbase Mobile is, uh, yeah, that's CouchDB, right? Uh, many people have heard about CouchDB, and when they heard about CouchBase, they think it's the same. It's not, but uh, CouchBase works with a lot of the same protocols. It's based uh, partly on CouchDB. So while it's not the same product, it's understandable that people confuse them because they have a lot of the same benefits. Uh, some of the differences are that uh, CouchBase uh, works also as a key value store, and it has built-in failover, cache, and uh, memcache compatibility. Compatibility, sorry. Uh, yeah. In this presentation, I will be showing you some code, uh, but I will skip uh, the, in CouchBase, you have something called views that uh, you will use yet when uh, you're retrieving data from the server. I will not be discussing that because my focus here is on getting up and running uh, with an app, uh, and not uh, the, actually, the actual way to interact with the system, uh, retrieving it, and so on. Uh, so I'll be skipping that, but uh, if you will be working with Couchbase, you, uh, you will encounter this, and you should look it up uh, yourself. So, uh, when I'm talking about Couchbase now, there's a lot of different concepts. Uh, I'll be talking about Couchbase Mobile, which is uh, the top two uh, parts here, which is the Couchbase Lite, Couchbase Lite and the Sync Gateway. And then we have the Couchbase Server, uh, which uh, 
more people know about because that's what I usually use. Uh, yeah, and uh, as you can see from the images, uh, both the sync gateway and the server is uh, easily scalable. You can just add a new node and you're up and running. Uh, and of course, uh, Couchbase Lite will run on every client device, so uh, yeah, scalability as well. Uh, yeah, I can also mention that Couchbase Lite can talk uh, between each other peer-to-peer uh, -peer instead of uh, just to the server. Uh, and also, uh, Couchbase Lite is uh, cross-platform, uh, as uh, Maxim mentioned uh, before the talk. Uh, it runs on uh, Android, iOS, uh, with .NET code. Uh, it works with PhoneGap, uh, runs on uh, Node.js. And uh, yeah, so you can use it almost everywhere, um, with one exception, which is why I'm mentioning Couchbase. No, uh, why I'm mentioning uh, PouchDB at the end of the talk. All right, so. Uh, I'll be discussing the different parts uh, for a bit now. Uh, Couchbase Server, um, as I mentioned, it's scalable, it's high performance. Uh, it's great for availability. Um, you can run it all the time. You can easily switch out nodes uh, if one goes down and you have several running. You'll, yeah, you can just keep going uh, if you need to replace one and so on. Uh, and it's no SQL, uh, schemaless, uh, key value store, uh, and you have a distributed cache, uh, which is great. Now, um, this kind of weird, just random letters on the bottom here, uh, N1QL, is called Nickel. It's uh, a new query language uh, that uh, Couchbase released, uh, I think it was one or two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Someone can arrest me if not. Uh, it's a really powerful SQLite uh, query language for this NoSQL database, which is great. And um, the first time I gave this talk, it was uh, last year, uh, Nickel hadn't really been uh, out there yet. Uh, and that's why I started using Elasticsearch. Now, Nickel could re replace parts of the uh, Elasticsearch search, cap search capabilities that I'll look for, but uh, I'm going to be talking about Elasticsearch even though, even still, uh, because there are uh, several uh, powerful features that is still missing from Nickel, like um, searching in uh, geolocations and uh, dates and so on. I'll come back to that later. So as I mentioned, Couchbase Mobile is a common term for uh, uh, Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Sync Gateway. Um, so I was kind of confused at first because I saw both of these terms and couldn't really uh, figure out what the difference was. But it's mainly that uh, you uh, you have a Couchbase Lite that talks to a Sync Gateway, which is basically just a REST endpoint uh, that handles authentication and uh, replication, filtering with what kind of um, uh, what kind of data do you want to send to uh, e each uh, device. So you handle much of the logic in the sync gateway on the server and uh, combined with the uh, Couchbase Lite on the device, that's Couchbase Mobile. All right, so uh, Couchbase Lite, it's uh, lightweight and it's embedded uh, in NoSQL database. Um, like Couchbase Server, it's based on the CouchDB protocol, uh, which is a common theme here, and uh, we'll see that that's an important uh, part uh, when we get to the CouchDB uh, later on. Uh, now, I say that um, Couchbase Lite is uh, local first, and it's implicit offline support. And by that, I mean that the code that you uh, write on a client will just talk to the local database. Every time you make a change, you uh, you add a comment on uh, something, or you write uh, an article, or you uh, read something, you just talk to the local database. And that is great, because you won't have to deal with the network problems. What if network goes down for a moment? You don't have to show an error message 
because of that. Uh, you won't have to wait for loading. Um, and uh, that kind of builds up that no matter how you do this, you will start off with an offline first approach if you use uh, Couchbase Mobile. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, there's support for uh, yeah, pretty much any uh, platform that you want to develop for. Um, the .NET uh, platform uh, was kind of obscure before, but uh, from what I understand, I haven't tried it myself, but uh, that's really up and running and equal to the other ones now. <coughs> Sorry. And yeah, uh, I can also, also mention that uh, on uh, Couchbase's uh, homepage, uh, you will find extensive documentation for every platform, and uh, each article will actually let you switch uh, back and forth between uh, which platform you are developing for. So you can see the code for iOS, and then you can just click a tab and you see the code for Android in the same article, and it will just swap there. That's a really cool thing I, they've done. Right, so Sync Gateway is basically magic here. Uh, that's how you bind all of this together. Uh, as I mentioned, it handles replication, it handles access control, uh, it works with uh, many different kinds of authentication. So you have OAuth, or you have uh, Facebook uh, login, and so on. And you will also uh, define channels that uh, the devices will uh, subscribe to. Uh, which can be, uh, for example, uh, channels that uh, only send you data that uh, a single user is authenticated for, or a user group, for example. Uh, and it will also, of course, filter, say, on dates or anything. That's something you configure in a JSON document, um, or JSON and JavaScript uh, documents uh, on the server side. Uh, so it's a fine central way to handle all of that. You don't have to spread that out into each device. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, a bit more about channels. Um, each channel will define which users can access it. Uh, and it has a sync function. Uh, this is written in JavaScript. And in that, you can basically define anything you want to. Um, it's required for uh, each channel, and um, yeah, in there you can define business logic and uh, access controls and uh, filter on the actual content if you want to do that. Uh, if you want to do, be that specific, that say you filter away certain kinds of documents. Uh, yeah. So, um, Couchbase Lite can of course subscribe to different channels. It, it's not a one-to-one -one, uh, or one-to-many uh, connection. You can, uh, each, each client or each uh, device can subscribe to a multitude uh, of these uh, channels. Um, yeah. And you, of course, many users can subscribe to each channel. There should be some text here. Oh, um, just a second. <laughs> Oh, all right, so some animation. I didn't know that was there. So, uh, conflict handling. Uh, of course, when you have replication, uh, one of the major problems that people have um, is uh, conflict handling. What if two users make a change in the same document uh, at roughly the same time? What do you do? Well, uh, the final or the real thing you should do is handle it yourself, write the code for it, and I'll get back to that. But uh, Couchbase will have a simple and stupid uh, algorithm for making a choice on what to serve you if you haven't handled this yet. So basically, uh, it's a three-step three algorithm uh, where uh, the first rule is that it will give you the undeleted leaf on the longest revision graph, which is basically where it's the most changes uh, for this document, it will give you the final one. So if one user has made five changes and another one has made two changes, it will choose the one with five changes. Wow, all right. So if it's a tie there, 
uh, it will give you, oh, no, sorry, if it's, uh, it doesn't have an undeleted uh, leaf node, uh, so if several users have deleted it, it will give you the deleted leaf on the longest branch uh, in the same way. And if it's still a tie that it can't decide between them, um, it doesn't have an uh, undeleted leaf and it, uh, or the branches are the same length, and then, yeah. Uh, it will give you a leaf with a revision ID which sorts higher in ASCII. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you will understand that that is just, all right, we'll throw something out there. Uh, luckily, uh, Couchbase won't uh, make the merge and uh, remove the content it discards. It will still be there in several uh, revisions, which is why we need to uh, handle it ourselves. So we need to write uh, code that uh, looks through all of these changes. And we can do that, for example, by uh, running uh, some code on a server, put up a small Node.js server, anything that just listens to changes and sees if, if there are more several revisions, we go through them and we handle it uh, through our own logic. So uh, we can do that by, yeah, we, we have all of the metadata when, when it was created, who did, who created it and uh, so on. If we want to merge it, we can try to merge it. Uh, but basically that is something you have to consider. Couchbase won't solve this problem for you, but it will make it uh, obvious how to handle it by uh, introducing this. Um, it, it, it has these uh, functionality for going through this. So, I think most of us are developers here, so hopefully you want to see some code. And I'm, I'm not gonna do live coding. I'm kind of scared of uh, getting lost somewhere and uh, spending all our time. So I will, uh, I have some code in slides here. I'll be showing you all the code you need uh, on Android. Um, I'm using that as an example, uh, mainly because I don't have an iPhone. Uh, I'll be showing you all of the code you need uh, to get up and started with the replication and so on. So first few slides are pretty basic, just need to add the dependencies. Um, I need to just a disclaimer, this, this uh, examples are a bit old, so uh, the versions are probably uh, upgraded from now, but uh, the code should be the same. So yeah, basically add the dependencies, um, add, um, yeah, add a single line in a build script, and then we start. So uh, what you want to do is probably on startup in your main application, you want to uh, establish a connection to the database or create the database if it hasn't been created yet. Uh, so uh, what we need to do is uh, we have the manager uh, object here. Perhaps I can use it. Yeah, so we have the manager object here, uh, which is required to uh, create databases. Uh, so we need to create that one first, then we uh, get the database. We specified some kind of name. Um, I used an example here just for an app to list uh, different uh, courses uh, for school. Uh, but you, of course, make whatever names you want to have. Uh, now, the get database method will uh, create a database if it doesn't find one by that name. Uh, but there are other methods that you can use if you don't want to create one. So say you just want to check if it's there and open a connection if it is, then uh, that's a different method from that and you will just receive a null value back if, uh, if it didn't find one. <coughs> so uh, once we have a connection to the database, we want to add a change listener, which is how we're gonna be receiving and uh, adding data. Uh, yeah, so that's how we will uh, know when to update the uh, user interface. All right, so uh, this is where it gets interesting. We need to uh, start synchronization. The, um, the sync URL uh, up here, uh, that's uh, pointing to the sync gateway. So 
if you have a Couchbase database uh, up and running today, you will probably be talking to it directly. <coughs> but once you're starting with Couchbase Mobile, you'll be talking through the sync gateway because of uh, the handling of uh, content and such there. Uh, so yeah, so we establish a connection there uh, to the sync gateway. And then it's as easy as creating a pull re replication, for example, uh, which is how we get content from the database. Uh, we can set continuous, for example, which means it will continuously listen and ask the server for more content. But we can also do a single pull uh, replication. For example, on startup, uh, for example, the uh, mobile air app uh, loads a lot of content when you uh, start it up for the first time. So that's a single replication. So you can uh, switch which one you want to do there. Uh, if you have a live feed, you probably want a continuous one. If you're just getting some articles for uh, the app that is going to be static, you can do that uh, once and on startup of the app, and that's it. Uh, and then you start it. And same, it's the same kind of code for a push replication. So each time you push, you write something to the local database, it will just send it to the server. Uh, and that will be handled separately so that it won't make your application hang while it's doing in this. It just runs in the background. Um, <coughs> and also here, uh, this is the magic part, that if you, if you lose internet connection, this one will just be running and waiting for a, a connection. And once it gets a connection, then we'll start sending things. So you, do, you won't have to uh, consider that in your code uh, at all, actually. <coughs> all right. Finally, we just need to run this. So on create in the uh, activity, you uh, initialize the database, start synchronization, and you're done. So that is 55 lines of code. Uh, including the config, and that's the basics of what you need. Of course, there's more code when you want to write and uh, so on, but uh, you're up and running with this code. So how about web? I've been talking about uh, Android. I've been talking about iOS. I've been talking about the Windows Phone, but we're kind of getting lost here if we do not consider progressive web apps. So uh, why I'm so enthusiastic about this is because I finally found the missing link. Uh, I didn't have this for about a year after I started working with Couchbase Mobile, which was kind of one thing I was uh, kind of disappointed about, that I couldn't just implement this for the web as well. And there comes Couchbase, DB, no, PouchDB. <coughs> Uh, I put the name up there because when I say PouchDB, a lot of people hear CouchDB. And uh, of course, it's just CouchDB with a P. Uh, <laughs> so it's based on CouchDB with a C. Uh, so it works with the same protocols that CouchBase works with. And that is why it's easily integratable with uh, the sync gateway. They already run the same protocols. You can do the same things with Couchbase Lite, almost. I'm, I'm not saying completely, but you can do a lot of the same thing with PouchDB that you can do with Couchbase Lite. So, yeah. Uh, PouchDB was created to make it easier for developers to create offline first web apps. Uh, we'll be create, talking about offline first native apps. Uh, so, yeah. It works fine in uh, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, IE, uh, just about any browser you want to use then. Um, so yeah, and it's lightweight. It's only uh, four to six kilobytes. Um, makes it not that expensive to uh, use. And it's a great uh, alternative to, uh, for example, uh, indexed, uh, IndexedDB, I think it's the name. Um, and it's sort of based on that one as well. All right, so before we had this architecture, um, Couchbase server, the same gateway in between, and then Couchbase Lite, so all we do is um, 
is add the PouchDB, and suddenly we have covered just about every platform you can possibly be want uh, to be using. All right, uh, and uh, of course, uh, filtering uh, configured in the sync gateway will apply to uh, PouchDB as well, because PouchDB will just be asking for content from the sync gateway. <coughs> All right, so I've been promising search on steroids. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, after Couchbase uh, published a nickel uh, query language, a lot of the argument for using Elasticsearch drawing in another technology goes away. But in my mind, Elasticsearch is the king of search. It, uh, if people haven't been looking into it, uh, you should. It's uh, powerful, it's fast, it's scalable, and you can do so many cool things. You can query ba based on geolocation, you can query on dates, you can uh, f aggregate uh, the results, you can uh, use uh, facets for faceted search. I don't know if the people from Finn are here, but that's mainly basically what they're doing um, uh, on the, on the Finn.no page. So I want to add cooler capabilities to my apps uh, once I have the offline first uh, app up and running. I have basic uh, functionality. Now I want to do more powerful stuff, and that's why we're introducing uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, I won't go into the implementation details, but I will be talking about how to use it in this combination. So as I mentioned, this really is scalable available, uh, you have a REST API that you talk to, uh, which is important here. Uh, of course, you can't run Elasticsearch on your mobile. Uh, it runs on the server. Uh, so what I'm proposing is, if you're offline, just collect data from uh, the local database on your phone. Uh, instead of showing a search bar, uh, you can, for example, just show a list of the content. Uh, and just have a kind of simple, uh, naive uh, lookup uh, in your local database for what content to show first. Uh, but once you get online, you should add this. Uh, you should add a search bar, for example, or just use this in the methods you already do to look up uh, content. <coughs> so what you can do is. Um, I'm not going to be talking about the other ones. So what you do is uh, you query Elasticsearch by some parameters. Say, I want uh, every message sent from this user between uh, Thursday and uh, last uh, June uh, sent, for example, from Oslo. And uh, Elasticsearch will look through the data and it will send you back, or you can configure it to send back just the document IDs. And this is important because we don't want to send a lot of data each time you search. But if Elasticsearch can just send you back the document ID, you can use that to look up the data on your local phone, which reduces, of course, uh, data traffic by a huge amount. That instead of sending the whole document uh, or everything you search for, and probably you're just going to use the first one, you just receive back a few small uh, IDs. So, yeah. Um, and as you can see, uh, I mentioned between the Couchbase server and Elasticsearch, uh, uh, I have something called Couchbase Elasticsearch Transport, which is basically a small plugin uh, that is, uh, <coughs> uh, which is a small plugin uh, created to uh, index Couchbase with Elasticsearch. So it's basically just listening for changes in Couchbase, and Elasticsearch will index it in milliseconds. It's really quick and works great. So yeah. Um, yeah. And all of this uh, software is licensed under the Apache 2 license. Uh, it's all open source. It's all free, uh, which is great. So. Uh, as mentioned, we have the Couchbase integration. 
uh, near time or near real time replication. Uh, you can see a small lag. I've, I've been trying to uh, send this data from different uh, continents and uh, just looking at the real time data, seeing when it gets in, it's, it's milliseconds. Uh, what you need to do is you need to map the data. And that's where it gets uh, tricky, but uh, just raise hand in again. How many people have used Elasticsearch? Right, about half. So you know that mapping data is important. You need to tell Elasticsearch what, what type of data is this. Uh, because by default, it will just try to figure out itself. Uh, and a lot of stuff it can just call a string or whatever. So you need to map the data, and I won't show that, but those documents can get huge, and that's, if you want to try all of this uh, together, that, that is the biggest job, the way I see it, uh, just mapping your data. Uh, yeah. And of course, you can also decide what to filter. Now, I talked about filtering in the sync gateway, but we can do filtering uh, in, elast in the Elasticsearch plugin as well, which means that you won't uh, search all of the data. Perhaps something is sensitive, perhaps something uh, you just don't want there. So you can configure that as well in the Elasticsearch transport plugin. All right. So um, finally, uh, we have this. Um, I haven't uh, used the mobile. Uh, I've just stolen this from the Couchbase uh, web page, of course. Uh, so this is uh, for mainly just talking to the server and uh, back. But uh, as you can see, we have the Couchbase cluster. Uh, we have the Elasticsearch cluster. Those are scalable. Uh, you can scale them as much as you want. And um, you will just cut. Instead of this point here, you will have uh, the sync gateway, and on the top you have the different devices that you sit with. Um, yeah. So that's really the final setup. You do queries, you get back document IDs, and then you ask for those documents in the, instead of asking for them on a the server, you ask for them on the Couchbase Lite database on your cell phone. And that's about it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I think we have about five minutes left. Yes? Could it be a good uh, use case for each server to use uh, the Couchbase Lite without the gateway? And yeah, of course. If you just want storage of anything on your phone, you can use it without all of the other stuff. Uh, if you, Myself, I prefer working with uh, NoSQL databases. Uh, there are arguments for both, uh, but uh, built in you have SQL Lite, for example, on Android. Um, Couchbase Lite is an alternative if you want to use uh, NoSQL, and it works great separately. So, yes, it is. It's free, and it's uh, you can change it if you want, and yeah. All right, so the question is, uh, Couchbase is schemaless, so what happens if you have uh, changes in the schema? And that's basically something that you handle uh, in the code. Uh, so it's a common theme in all, all NoSQL databases um, that you, you should be using the data that you want to be using now, and of course you need to check if it's there. Uh, you can't uh, just depend on, uh, for example, a database uh, requirement that uh, this can't be null, for example. So uh, yeah, you just need to handle that in your code, uh, checking and showing it if it's there. If, it's, uh, if you're lacking something that makes the content uh, invalid, you shouldn't return it, probably. But you write that logic yourself. What? An example? No. So we have to manually write that Yeah, you, uh, you, you need to write that. Yes. All right. Encryption. Encryption, yeah. Uh, you can encrypt uh, data both on the phone and, sorry, I guess. Uh, you can encrypt data both on the phone and in a uh, Couchbase database. Uh, and 
yeah, you can use, of course, HTTPS uh, with a sync gateway. Um, so yeah, uh, the simple, um, I didn't show that code, but I was looking at it just uh, half an hour ago or before the talk. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's quite easy to encrypt it. Uh, I don't know the actual protocol I used, but uh, yeah. All right, any more questions, Jonas? If you have a lot of data, ah, a lot of data and uh, what's the question, how do you convince the client to download all of it or not, no, not, not download it, right? Yeah, uh, so uh, one thing you can do is uh, in the channels in the sync gateway, you can filter it. Uh, say that you only want to rep replicate, for example, the most recent data or a uh, certain amount of data. Uh, so that would be my uh, suggestion. So yes, you, you filter that because of that. Yeah, all right, so if you have pagination but you have the uh, continuous replication. Exactly. And so what happens when the users go and download and continue the same replication? All right, uh, so what happens if you, uh, if you don't have the data yet? All right, uh, so um, that, that kind of depends. If you're just showing, you're not using the Elasticsearch uh, stuff, you're just looking up from the local database. Uh, you will basically not have more data and uh, then you probably won't create a link for the next page in the pagination. Uh, but um, so if, if, it's, if it's synchronizing while you're showing it, I guess that's the kind of issue. Um, I, I think you should just uh, consider what you have locally uh, and say it's not there yet. Uh, and uh, for, for example, have uh, someone on a page uh, a small icon that says, okay, I have more content, just refresh the page. Um, but you c of course, you can also do that automatically, just adding the link for the next page once you have content for it. Um, you, you can choose that yourself, but uh, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, you, you can restrict that in the sync gateway to not... You, you don't want to download a two gigabyte uh, database uh, for your phone, of course. Yep. All right? Yep, and I think last question for, uh, from me. I'm uh, personally a big fan of uh, progressive web applications. So this pouch, DB, do they use the same set of APIs like uh, service worker, cache API to, to get the, the Yeah, well, uh, all right, so uh, yeah. Um, pouch DB, uh, you can use it in the progressive web apps. Uh, it doesn't handle the service worker. That is something you write yourself. That is a standard thing. Uh, but instead of uh, storing data in the app cache or in uh, IndexedDB or something like that, you can store it in PouchDB. So it's just plug and play into the uh, normal setup that you would have today. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vigar. Thank you for coming.